badge. Is it stabbing you? Yeah. That's your badge. It is Daddy's badge, isn't it? Yeah. Can can we take it off for now? Why? Because it's hurting me now. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Jackson and welcome to my channel Dan's the Engineer. If you follow me on LinkedIn, you may have seen me post a photo of a cracked switch, a light switch, and I asked people, what would you code this if you found it during an electrical installation condition report? Now we got a lot of different answers from people. We got C1s, we got C2s, and we got C3s. This video is about that really. The switch I'm talking about is actually this one. As you can see, it's cracked on one side there. It's actually in my home, it's in my kitchen. So I come home the other day, I turn the light switch on, I felt something drop on the floor, or heard something drop on the floor, and then the front plate fell off as well. So I literally touched the switch and it's more or less, you know, just cracked off there. It wasn't heavy use or anything like that. So if you can see the switch, and I can literally just take that off, that'll just fall off, it's broken now. So, you know, that's done. The switch comes in two parts, it's got this cosmetic cover, and then you've got the actual main switch, so this isn't a separate part, the bit that's cracked, and if you can see, you can see little cracks around there. I mean, it's not it's not too bad. I mean, I'm pushing on it hard. It's not gonna, it's not gonna fall apart in your hand anymore, but that bit just obviously cracked and gave way. So what do we code that? Some people were saying a C2 because it's a cracked switch, but the truth is, is it unsafe? Okay, it's cracked, but is it unsafe? That is the important question. Now let's explain the code in a little bit more. So you've got C1, C2, C3, and FI. A code one means danger present, risk of injury, immediate action, remedial action required. There's an immediate shock risk. For example, open live conductors and you can physically touch them and get an electric shock. C2 is potentially dangerous, urgent remedial action required. An example of this could be that an accessory could be smashed. There's not immediate risk of you touching that, but due to the damage, there could be a risk of you being able to touch that. So it's not you know, an immediate, but it still is a dangerous thing that needs to be sort of rectified. A C3, a code three is improvement recommended. So it might not meet current regulations. It doesn't necessarily mean it is unsafe or dangerous, but it needs to be noted down. And FI stands for further investigation, which means a further investigation without delay needs to be carried out. This might be something that it requires more looking into fault finding or something like that, that isn't apparent. Now they can't be ignored because if you carry out further investigation, investigation you might find more c1 c2 or even c3 items so we got all sorts of responses on the post on linkedin some people um put it's a c1 um some knobheads uh saying that it doesn't meet manufacturers um guidelines or whatever so it should be replaced immediately that's got nothing to do with safety uh, there was some people saying c2 some people were arguing with the people saying it's C2, saying, oh no, it's a C3 and giving reasons. It, you know, it's a good little debate, but it was worth it. And obviously the important thing about this particular one is that nobody knows the ins and outs. There were two um, particular comments that I want to read out. One of them by, is by an electrical consultant called David Watts. You may know him, AKA Sparky Ninja. So I'm just going to read out his um, response. So he said, I agree with Ryan, that's uh, Ryan Dempsey. Um, from the compliance workbook. Too many variables, that's why I question the use of these books and guides as most often the risk is found with knowledge and judgment on the environment and external influences, not just on the defect component in front of you. I normally play along with the rules of section 41 with my coding, basic and fault protection. We use the protective measures to ensure that the protection against electric shock is achieved under fault-free and single fault conditions. I flip this to my coding. Is the risk there an, an immediate danger, loss of basic protection, or a potential danger where an immediate danger can occur from a single action, operation, or fault. Basically what we're saying about um, is it immediate or is it potentially. Non-conformance with a requirement for the additional protection would work the same way. In this case of this switch, assuming it isn't installed in a special location, which it's not, it's in a kitchen, you have to ask yourself how the electrical installation was conforming to the requirements of section 41. The base 
the protection for barriers isn't compromised, IP2X, so basic protection is achieved. So it's not a code one, because you can't get an electric shock immediately off it. The circuit's ability to achieve automatic disconnect disconnection in a single fault condition is mo most likely sound. So he's saying then it's not a C2 for that reason, because if a single fault occurred, it still wouldn't be dangerous in this current state. The switch is broken damaged. It could be improved. C3 in my opinion. So that's what they've said. And I think that is a very, very good approach on how to carry out your coding. So you have to you take into consideration the environment, what's happening around you. Now bear in mind, they haven't seen the switch. I just put a really, really simple photo. So I didn't really explain much. And that was the kind of purpose. I wanted to get a bit of a debate going on. So what Dave is saying is that if you're not achieving basic protection, then it's possibly a C1. If you're not achieving fault protection, it's possibly a C2. And then you sort of work your way back there. So, and so that's why he's come up to, with his conclusion as a C3. So the second interesting person who commented was Richard Townsend. He works for Napit and he's actually involved in a book um, by Napit, Code Breakers. And I'll read his uh, response. Those types of switches are in two parts. The base with the rocker switch and a purely cosmetic cover to give the impression of a clean screwless finish. They literally clip on. You're right, Richard, they do. If the main body isn't perfectly aligned, they don't stay on well. That's exactly right, Richard, because it's fallen off in my hand. The base part is designed to meet the requirements for IP, etc., without a cosmetic cap. So as long as the main part isn't damaged, it's no code. If when the cosmetic part is taken off the rocker shows signs of damage, but no IP encroachment issues, I'd say a C3. If it's just a case of cosmetic only front cover with damage, my argument would be it's not an electrical safety infringement and therefore no code. I do agree because it's just a cover and it just doesn't look nice. Just because something doesn't look nice doesn't make it unsafe. It's on tile, so I'm guessing it's a kitchen. He's clever, this one, isn't he? And my above take on it wouldn't change. Without all the variables being known, no one here can say for sure. What it certainly isn't is a code one or a code two as I am looking at it. That's sort of Richard's uh, thoughts about it. And obviously what I didn't explain, what I didn't explain to people was that it is a kitchen. Now the sink is about three meters away. Do we use, do we have wet hands when we use this uh, switch? We do because the food prep area is literally right next to it. So there is, um, you know, we have got to take the environment into account. I mean, it's not gonna affect what I'm saying here. Now also, what the guys don't know is why it's cracked. Now, I've taken the switch off, I've looked behind. Is it burning out? Is it overheating? Is it cracked behind? It's not, it's absolutely fine. It's just, you know, it's, it's a cheap, it's a cheap light switch at the end of the day. And I just want to point out, I hate this these accessories they've used in my house. I haven't had this house for too long, so I haven't done much electrical work. Well, I've when I've taken sockets out and whatever, we've put MK back and done a little bit of this and that electrical condition report on the place yeah the, these switches i've left them in the kitchen for now but now i'm obviously gonna have to change that one now what's what i think is important for me to explain is that when i do any work for anybody i always think to myself what would i do in your situation what would i do if that was in my house well this is my house so i don't ever want to put my wife at risk i don't want to put my kids at risk so am i worried about my wife's um, gonna get electric shock from this light switch no she's not I've told her, I said, just be a little bit careful. If it damages any more, let me know. I will change it um, very soon. I'm not worried about that. Now, I've, I've had a big old, uh, you know, I've bashed on that switch to make sure that it's not gonna fall apart in someone's hand. It's not, it's still quite robust. It's obviously just the little wedges, bit of age or whatever, and, it, and it's popped off. And just annoyingly, the front cap as well, you know, just falls off in your hand. I would code it personally as a C3 simply because um, the explanations that the guys, uh, Richard and David, um, what they've said really, it's, it's not a C1, it's not immediately dangerous. Is a fork gonna affect it in a way that can make it um, a C1, for example? Nope. So, you know, it's a C3 in this instance. When you're doing testing inspection and you're coding, you've got to use all your senses, you've got to use your engineering judgment and take into account the environment and do a self-risk assessment on each item and it'll help you come up with your conclusions. Don't just think, oh, that's cracked, that's a C2, it's got to be take things into consideration. And I think your, your reports will, will improve when you do that. There's been a lot of topics about the NAPIT's book, The Code Breakers, which is a guide on coding. What NAPIT have said to me is that it's not a set in stone, you've code this as that, code that as a C1, C2. 
again, you've got to use engineering judgment behind it. Every can I, every case is different. This is a house. A house is use is different to like a car wash or you know a pub or something like that. They're all different uses. So you've got to take them into consideration. Um, I highly recommend you check out the Code Breakers book. They are adding to it. It's a great book. It's a great guide. I think it's the best basic guide for coding that we've got out, that is out there. I, I mean, I know there's a few little publications. Um, the Electrical Safety First Guidance Note 4, I think it is. I've never liked it. Never liked it. I've had so many arguments with people in the past saying the guide, the best practice guide says this, so it should be this code. It's like, no, it's a guide. It's the inspector's decision at the end of the day because they're the one making a judgment on the specific scenario. You know, The Code Breakers is a great book. Check it out. If you haven't already checked out Sparky Ninja's channel, head over there. I'm going to put a link above. Um, it's a really good channel. There's a lot of technical information and discussions that he highlights so check him out thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this one as always give it a thumbs up if you liked it if you haven't done so already subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next one goodbye